G'day viewers and welcome to another video from Alex Does. My name is Alex. Uh, just a quick video this week, something a little bit different. You know, I like to mix it up a little bit but still have a little bit of purpose in what I'm trying to do and hopefully present some content for you guys that you feel is uh, maybe informational. You know I'm not very educational. <laughs> I'm not very nutritional. But can I be entertainable? No, entertaining. Entertaining. Can I be entertaining? Possibly the mediocre entertaining channel on YouTube. Anyway, so something different this week. I'm going to do a review of saws. Um, I'm no expert on saws. Obviously, I've used a lot of saws. I have to cut a lot of firewood while I'm here. You would have seen me cut a lot of wood. I've obviously hand sawn all the wood in the shelter behind me. So, sawing wood is certainly one of at least two reasons why my right arm is a lot bigger than my left. So yeah, I thought what I've done is I've brought all the saws that I've had on this channel since it started, well not since it started, since I did it, I started doing camping and bushcrafting back in June of 2020. So it's been, uh, we've just passed the one year anniversary mark. Probably by the time this comes out, we're about probably into August, I'm sure, 2021. So yeah, bar one, I've brought all the saws that I've had on this channel, plus a new saw, which is uh, what has prompted this saw review. I have a new bit of kit which is exciting because we all love, love new gear. This one's new, kind of new, new to me. New to me, we'll get into that in a minute. So yeah, I brought all my saws with me that I've had since the beginning, bar one which I gave away to somebody, uh, which was the cheaper bow saw that I had while I waited for the bow saw that you see me use all the time come in on order. So what's prompted this is that I've gone and got a, a, uh, a new saw which we'll talk about in just a minute because I might have mentioned on last week's video that I'm starting to think about the roof on the structure. And obviously the tarps up there uh, to keep me dry until we do figure out a roof. I have talked about the roof obviously on a couple of previous occasions. So let's talk about first the then should we do the review. Let's jump straight into the saw review. It's probably what you came here for. Rightio, let me grab the first one. Rightio, so this saw is pretty common. You're gonna see a lot of people on YouTube this use this saw. It's, uh, it is a popular saw and for good reason. This is the Barco Laplander saw. And uh, it's, a, it's pretty good, I really like it. It's the first saw that I bought. It's not, it's not overly expensive. It's about, I don't know from memory, I think they're about $60 or something like that. I think you can pick them up at your hardware store, Bunnings, if you're in Australia. Yeah, I really like it. There is just one downside, though, that I did find with this saw is that they're not particularly fire resistant. So if you do go and throw these in the fire, generally after about two to three minutes of being in direct flame, the handle does start to catch fire and melt and gets to the point where you can't actually fold it down anymore. I see. You can see there it's quite melted. So yeah, I found that out the hard way. Other than that, it does, it cuts on the push and the pull. It seemed to stay relatively sharp for the time that I was using it. I just found that apart from it obviously melting, and that was what prompted me to replace it. Yeah, it's a pretty good saw. I think if you're packing into the bush or you're just worried about cutting small pieces of wood for your fire and that sort of thing, it's perfect. It's lightweight packs down fairly small until you burn the handle and you can't fold it. So yeah, I give it three and a half logs out of five. Barco Lapmander. So if you're gonna follow the same progression I did, once you've thrown your Barco Laplander in the fire and burnt it, the next choice, which is obviously a very popular choice, again, you, if you watch other bushcrafting YouTube channels, you'll see every man and his dog using a silky saw. Even if you watch, if you're a fan of the show alone, you'll see uh, quite a few of the contestants there take the big silky katanas on there, which um, you can get with blades up to a, a metre long or 1,100 millimetres long or something like that. Anyway, so the next saw I got was a silky gomboy. I think these come in a couple of different lengths. This is the 300 mil, and the blade I've got on this one at the moment, which is quite dirty because I don't look after my gear, is the curved blade. And there's not much of a curve to the curved blade. I didn't really notice that much of a difference, to be honest, while I was using it. So the things that I like and dislike about these. Firstly, when I got this, I think the first blade that I had, which is why I, I, this is not the first blade, it came with a straight blade. I think I busted it 
maybe the second or third camp that I went on. They're quite a thin, flexible blade, really high carbon steel. Now I think it's, it's a Japanese blade and very typical of Japanese. It cuts only on the pull. So if you're a bit of a puller, you're prone to a pull, you like to have a bit of a pull, these are the saws for you. I don't mind the odd pull, um, but I also like to push as well. So it, it, it frustrates me sometimes that on the push that it doesn't cut. It's like you're doing, you're only getting results on half the effort compared to a push-pull saw, but because it is because I think that the blades are so brittle with being a high carbon steel that, because what happens is even when you're cutting into quite larger um, pieces of log and that, if there's a lot of resin in there, they bind and then you, you'll see a bend and bow and bleep, snap, you know, it's gone. So that's why they only cut on the pull. So yeah, that was it. So once I, uh, the reason why I upgraded from this though is I knew that once I was going to be building this shelter that I'd be cutting some fairly big logs and uh, that's why I upgraded to a bow saw. But I still bring this with me on every single camp. If I'm doing any finer cutting, I use this. So it's good. It's great. I really like it. Cost-wise, I don't think these are either too expensive either. They're, these are probably only maybe ten or ten or twenty dollars more than what the the um, Barco Laplander is, and um, plenty of online suppliers, and it's easy to get replacement blades, which aren't that expensive either. So they're not bad. So Silky Gomboy, I give it four point two logs out of seven. All right, next. Right, so I did have an interim interim bow saw that I bought simply because I knew that I wanted this one and uh, I, I had to order it in uh, but I still wanted a bow saw so I bought a cheap one which I've since given away but um, so this I have is the Barco Ergo I think it is uh, although it's got Barco Force written on it it's pretty worn out uh, Barco Ergo Force apparently um, I think it's a 30 inch, they come in different sizes, you can get them down to about half that. Yeah, highly, highly rate this saw. This saw is in, it's awesome. If you're going to get a bow saw, get this one. What the difference of this over the cheaper one that I had is it's just so much more rigid for starters. The frame is a lot more rigid compared to a cheaper one. Don't go to Bunnings and get one of their bow saws, they really are crap. Go and order you. You can get these online. I think Mitre 10 might stop them if you've got a Mitre 10 hardware store near you. No, no endorsement, obviously, but I think they stock them, and you can certainly get them online. The other great thing about this, you've got really nice ergonomical handle, hence the name Ergo, I think. Finger protection, which I never really had an issue without finger protection, but finger protection in case you've got delicate fingers. And you've also got pretty much infinite um, blade tensioning, which is a real issue. With the bow saws, the blades do stretch. Um, and with the, your traditional ones that you've only got a lever at the back, you're limited to just the, the holes. You know, you typically have, same as this blade, you've got two holes at either end. And once you're out, once you're, um, you've come into the, the smallest ones, you're out of stretch. But with this, and even then, it's, it's in, very incremental. You've basically got four positions that you can stretch your blade to. Um, but with this, you've got, you know, you can turn, you've got almost infinite adjustability. Well, not quite infinite, but you know what I mean, with tensioning your saw, which is really, really important. You, you know, I can't understate how important your tension is because you learn, and this was the first bow saw I'd ever really used seriously, but you learn very, very quickly that if you don't keep your blade tensioned, your cut's going to go like that, um, which is why this one's cut on an angle. You probably can't see, but this one's cut on an angle because this is one of the first logs I ever cut. And I think I did it with my cheaper saw, So yeah, it's great. Limitations on this obviously is the depth of your cut. So anything much bigger than this log here. So this log here is only about probably about five or six inches. Um, it's probably about the maximum you want to do one of these. Blade quality is also really good too. Like I got this I think in January this year. So we're now July and it's still the original blade. But I have a new saw and I sh maybe I should talk about why I got the new saw before because if I just show you it you'll look at it and think what the freaking hell did you get that for so anyway oh what do I rate this I rate this I don't know nine logs out of ten this is this a hundred percent go and get one of these if I broke this today I would buy another one tomorrow so yeah highly rate it so the next saw the reason why I got the next saw I've talked about how a big part of this build is about 
you know, I, I, it's that romantic idea of the early pioneers and how they were, they built things and the sort of shelters they built and the sort of technology they had and that sort of stuff. It's why I don't, yeah, it's why everything here is done kind of, not really kind of, sort of traditionally, loosely, but certainly only using hand tools, no screws, no nails, nothing like that. Even though they had that stuff, but that's also to do with me not want to, wanting to leave non-natural materials in the bush when I eventually leave. So yeah, the roof. So the roof I wanted to do natural materials and uh, looking at the resources around here and the options that we've discussed previously. So options are available for traditional um, roofing, bark. Okay, bark would have been good. I'd like to do like a slab bark hut roof type thing. It really requires you to have access to be able to go and strip bark off freshly felled trees or standing trees. And I don't have, I'm not going to go and damage existing trees and I don't have, I'm not allowed to cut down trees and uh, I'm not going to go and, yeah, so that's not an option. The only bark around here that I could get to would be off trees that have been on the ground possibly for 10, 20 or 30 or more years and obviously the bark rots away so that's out, not an option. I had thought about, I had thought about, hang on, the stacks of this eucalypt type bark laying around and I had thought about, you know, sometimes you, if you get it at the right time, particularly after rain, this comes off in big sheets and I'd thought about maybe using that or tying bundles of this together and and putting it up there but I don't know how it would look I don't know how waterproof it you could really get it it'd, and I think it'd be a lot of work so that's really out I think at this stage because again my ideas are very fluid um, and I can be a bit flip floppy well it's not flip floppy it's just I, I think logically give things a go and I'm prepared to go okay that turned out to be wrong let's try something else other options that were discussed are palm Frong, so cabbage tree. I'm aware of one cabbage tree palm that's within reach of here. It's the only one I've seen, and I just don't think one cabbage tree palm is going to be enough to cover the roof. So that's out. Bracken fern, frongs, again, it's there's some around, but just not enough. And I don't, I doubt very much whether you'd, you'd get a, you'd have to have it this thick to make it waterproof. So there's something else that I might have hinted to before, but certainly that I'm very attracted to the idea of, and certainly the look of, and that is shingles. I like the look of shingles, like wood shingles. It's very traditional, handmade shingles. Technically, and again, so obviously I've graduated from the five minute university of YouTube. So I know a little bit and you know, enough to probably hurt myself. So if you're making them by hand, they're actually called shakes and okay so you know what shingles are when i talk about shingles for those that don't so it's basically taking a piece of log and splitting it down into planks small planks of wood and you lay them butted up next to each other and then another layer over the top overlapping each other like roof tiles but made of wood shingles technically are machine made and if they're handmade and hand split, they're called shakes. Um, so my, I'm obviously going to be doing shakes. The final stage of that requires a tool that I don't have, which is a fro. And not a fro, but a, a fro. For those who don't know what a fro is, here's a picture of a fro. So I haven't purchased one of those yet. I've been looking for one second hand. I've tossed up about the idea of maybe making one, but I'll probably just buy one at some point unless someone watching has got one and they want to get rid of it uh let me know so yeah that's the final stage the first stage involves going to a log cutting a section of log out of a fallen tree which is called bucking so i told you i've been studying bucking and then um so you, you take your log and then you you split it into sections and then those so you take your buck or your section of log you split into sections and then from that you kind of use your fro to peel off shakes so that's what i'd like to do so i didn't think like i'm thinking of the fallen logs that are around here and there are some big ones and i that is definitely not going to cut it but um and i'd like to have a crack at maybe bucking a big log because i'd get more shakes out of it if i can manage it but i might be biting off more than i can chew so i bought a new saw it's a long way around to just saying i've got a new saw which is not new second hand anyway shall we show you what I got right so this is my new old new to me saw so this is uh, a crosscut saw it's um, 
traditionally called a one-man saw. You can get all different types of uh, tooth patterns. So this is this is what I've got, and uh, yeah, so I managed to pick this up at a fairly reasonable price as a second-hand store. Shout out to uh, Matt and Roxy's second-hand store in Tukley on the Central Coast. So if you're in the area, go and uh, check out their store. If you're into second-hand goods, it was a pretty cool store. And um, yeah, I like these. I like they're very in. in they're very simple to sharpen um, just with a straight file I managed to sharpen these I don't know how good a job I did but I'm certainly pretty keen to uh, try this out other things about this it's a really strong sturdy blade they do come you'll see there's a hole either end they do typically come with a handle so that you can you know when you're using it like so that you can hold the handle up here and use it that way and um, if you want to, if you've got a second person to help you out, you can take the handle out and put the handle down that end. And uh, use it as like a small two-man saw. Um, this one didn't come with a handle, unfortunately. It, it does it did come with the little metal attachment that the handle goes on, um, but it was a little bit damaged, so I'm going to have to fix that up because I would like the second handle on there. Um, other than that, I'm not entirely convinced. I'm pretty positive, actually, that this uh, handle is not the original handle. It's not the most comfortable. It's a little small, the hole, to get my hand through with a glove on. So I may either make some, just file this or make some adjustments to it, or buy a new one. So anyway, that's my new saw. It's, I don't know, it's about four foot long, maybe three and a half, four foot long. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, and I'm pretty keen to give it a go. So I've got a log here. I thought what I'll do is I will, um, I've got to cut some firewood anyway. So what I might do is cut through this log firstly with the bow saw, and maybe we'll time it. And then I'll cut through with this. I want to do a comparison and see whether the bow saw is easier uh, with the blade that's six months old, or whether this, I mean, this is probably 100 years old. So whether this is any better. So we'll give that a go. All right, we're ready. Start the stopwatch, so it's not entirely accurate, but here we go. That wasn't too bad. It's um, definitely solid wood, though. You can see there, so there's nothing, no hollows in there or nothing like that. So it's nice and solid hardwood. So there we go. So now I'll uh, set myself up with the other saw, the new two, two man, one man saw, sorry, one man saw. And I'll uh, give me a minute to catch my breath. <laughs> and uh, we'll do another cut not far from that so the uh, diameters aren't too different. And uh, we'll go again. All right, so I'm pretty excited to try this out. So a couple of factors to keep in mind. One, this is the first time that I've ever used it. So I'm yet to learn any type of technique. Two, I'm the one who sharpened it. <laughs> I also know it's fairly common to um, oil these or lubricate them as you're using them. Although this is a fairly small log, so I don't know. So anyway, we'll see how we go. I'll tell you what, it's a lot heavier than the uh, bow saw, obviously. Well, I suppose we'll start there, eh? Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, that was quite interesting. I did put a little bit more physical effort in compared to the bow saw, but I think if I, maybe if I wasn't pushing against the clock, I'd go a little bit slower maybe. I think I got the sharpening okay. I don't know if it come picked up on camera. As I'm pulling the saw this way, it, it um, concentrates the vibration so that the tail of the blade's going like this, so I don't know if possibly that means that the teeth aren't set correctly. So I still need to get a, what's called a saw set, which sets the, the pitch of the, I think it's pitch, of the, the teeth either side. Because um, if you look, I don't know if it'll show on camera, because it's a cross-cut saw, the, there's, I don't know, the teeth kind of go like that alternating so I don't know if that's causing that vibration but I'm pretty pleased with that anyway tell us what you think I mean you got to consider too 
hundred year old saw compared to you know one that's six months old and I'll be able to cut some relatively hefty not massive but relatively I think decent logs with this um, ones around here they tend to be sort of in this range I think that'll be perfect there are some big ones that I'd really like to cut into but I just don't think this is long enough so anyway there we go so for what it is I give that nine and a half sausages out of ten what, whatever <laughs> and above all else does it look good on camera because <laughs> that's all I'm really concerned about does it look good on camera but anyway, so hopefully into the future I will be able to use this to buck some saws and then we need to go down the road of learning how to split those saws, saws, split those log pieces into sections that I can then use a fro to peel off some shakes to do the roof. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. There we go. Alex does saw review. What do you reckon? I'm sure you're all rushing out to find one of these now, eh? Uh, obviously, you're not going to fold this down and put it in your kit. Anyway, I'm going to end this video now. So it was just a, a quickie, a quick short video for this week, uh, something different. And um, okay, so that's it. Thanks for coming along. And uh, yeah, hit the uh, thumbs up and uh, hit the comments. Let us know what you think. And uh, please consider subscribing. It would certainly help me and the channel out. Thanks for coming. Bye.